Man, it is cold outside, guys, and it's only November 9th. It was down into the 20s last night around here, and that's been happening sooner and sooner in the year. In fact, the weather has just been getting weirder and weirder. I'm not going to get political here, but, you know, there's people out there talking about global warming. There's people saying it's a bunch of bunk. All I know is... All I know is the temperatures are changing, the weather patterns are changing, and it's getting colder and colder early on. But I want to talk about something real quick today because I got a question and somebody asked, Mike, what is the ideal temperature for bottom heat? What's the ideal temperature of the rooting medium in order to get those cuttings to root the best? So that's a great question, and I think it should be answered right now, but there's more than one answer to the question, I believe. And in a sec, I'm gonna take you inside and show you what I've got going on with my hardwood fig cuttings right now and the bottom heat and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about this for a minute. So most of the literature out there about rooting cuttings will tell you guys that the ideal temperature, the perfect temperature is right around 70 degrees. You know, I've read 68 to 72. I've even heard some people say as high as 80 degrees. Uh, you could root cuttings all the way down to like 55, give or take a few degrees, but you get down below that too much and they're probably not gonna root that well because the temperature's not up high enough for all those cells to just go like crazy. Johnny wants in for those little cells to grow like crazy and get roots going, but it can be done. So there's one, there's one thing I would like to say about the, the perfect rooting medium for these cuttings, and it's this. I don't think there's a perfect temperature. I mean, I guess if you guys are gonna pin me down to something, I think I would say 70 degrees. That's probably the perfect temperature. But I think what's of more importance is that the rooting medium be about 10 degrees warmer than the ambient air around the tops of the cuttings. So there's a rule of thumb when you're doing cuttings and that is to keep the bottoms warm and the tops cool because you want to encourage that root growth and you want the tops cool because you don't want to encourage the leaf growth and the top growth and stimulate summer. So if you were going to pin me down to something, I would say keep the bottom temperature about 10 degrees warmer than the ambient air. Now that's not exact science. I mean, if it's 15 degrees difference, whatever. You don't want 30 degree cuttings on top and 90 degree, you know, rooting area on the bottom. That probably is not a good combination, but about a 10 degree difference, give or take. And I think that is of more importance than the actual perfect temperature to have your cuttings at. If you're going to actually pin me down, I would say let's not pin it down to a temperature, but let's pin it down to a range. So maybe 60 degrees to 80 degrees for the rooting medium and then 10 degrees cooler for the ambient air around the tops of the cuttings. So I want to take you guys inside real quick. Let's look at my cuttings, my little setup I've got for the figs right now. It's fig cutting season time and I'm having fun with it again. But first, let's show you what I got going on out here with my figs. So I've been clearing a little area away over here, getting the roadies all shoved aside because it's time to bring these guys in. And I found out last winter that this hoop house is working perfectly to overwinter these figs. I've even got my black Madeira KK over there and it went fine last winter through the winter johnny is just active it went fine through the winter last year out here and then actually no this one i had indoors this is the black madeira kk i had out, outside and you can see it did great i took a cutting off of it and did some grafting so you can see it branched out more through the summer but look at that thing these guys are hardy and this is zone 8b but uh you know some people maybe zone six wouldn't do so well in a structure like this but zone 8b we're in western washington this thing worked out great for overwintering all these guys we're going to find out i've got my laterula in here or actually not my laterula my uh la bourgeoisie that's the one i was thinking of and uh there it is right there tags kind of hanging down in the pot but la bourgeoisie I took some cuttings off of this guy. It was a lot bigger, but I've got some of those rooting for Ben B, so we'll see how those turn out. But uh, that guy, it's the first year it's been out in the cold. We're gonna find out, but I think if the Black Madeira makes it just fine, I think this guy's gonna make it just fine too. But you can see I took some, uh, <laughs> I took some snips off the top of these guys already. 
I think that's the uh, Borgeso Grease. That's another nice variety. I can't wait to get that guy to root, but I've been rooting all these guys right now. I'm going to take you inside and show you what's going on. Now you're probably asking, Mike, where's the rest of them? They're still outside. I need to go get them and bring them in, but uh, these are the more tender varieties, so I wanted to get them in quickly last night. So let's go take a look at what we got going on inside, guys. So you guys have seen this little tote before. We're out here in our freezer room, our little pantry area, and I decided to set this up out here this year. We try to keep the temps in here around 60 degrees, and you've seen this before. This is uh, my little light setup. If you haven't seen it, go click in the link. I think it's on that side over there. Maybe it's on the other side. I don't know. Anyway, go click on that link, and it'll show you how I built this light. But I built this a couple of years ago, and I wanted to have a way to overwinter plants and now it's turning into a little cutting rooting light system and it works out great here. But these are all my figs. I started these, I think it's been probably a week now, maybe 10 days, something like that. I got all these nice varieties online that I didn't have yet. I'm really excited about them. Got some Bataglia, I uh, got some, well, the Prado was mine already, but Cold de Dam Noir. Uh, what else did we get? Noir de Barbentane. Did I say that right? I don't know. The Black Madeira and the La Bourgeoisie and the I-258, those guys, the Borgia So Grease, those were all off of my own plants. But anyway, this is my little fig cutting setup. And I did my Dixie cup method like I've done before where I put them in Dixie cups and put them down in the bottom of this tub. And then I filled in all around the Dixie cups and then just once I got everything in there, then I put some more bark over top of everything to hold heat in. And they're doing great so far. You can see it's only been, like I said, somewhere close to 10 days. And I already got little buds wanting to start to open up here. But, and I know a lot of people don't, you know, agree with this, but so far I've had tons of success. But these are hardwood cuttings. You don't need humidity. I keep saying that. However, I do come out here every once in a while maybe a couple times a day when I'm off and I just kind of spray them with my water bottle here and moisten everything just to keep them from drying out. But I'm not even sure that's completely necessary. But let's get back on track here. So I've got this set up here with my bottom heat underneath and you can see I've got it propped up on boards because this thing wasn't built for plants and it gets a little too hot. So I've got it propped up. It's a couple inches up above the heat mat and there's a little bit of space under here for air to flow through but it keeps this nice and warm underneath. Let's take this guy's temperature and find out exactly how warm. So my wife got this for me for Christmas last year so I'd quit using her her little uh, thermometer that goes in the turkey at Thanksgiving, but <laughs> we'll shove that guy down in the soil. And it's about, I kind of measured it before, it's pretty close to the bottom where most of the heat is building up. We'll see what this gets up to. We're already up to 72 degrees, 72.1 there. And that's about, I mean, if you're going to stick somebody to a number, I guess that's about... Perfect. That's what they say. 70 degrees right around there. Give or take a couple degrees. But there we are. 72.4. It's kind of holding solid. It's not really budging too much. You know, maybe it'd go up another another few little decimals there, but not much. So there it is. 72.5. Anyway, we're about where it probably is going to set. Now let's take this guy out of here and let's see what it's going to do in the ambient air around the cuttings. You can see the temperature already dropping. We're at 69, 68, and everything is just doing awesome in here, man. I am excited to see these guys root. I hope you guys are into figs too. If you're not, you need to get into figs because they're a lot of fun. 65.8. Start bouncing back up there for a sec. Let me set this guy down for a sec. All right. I don't want to hold on to the metal end there. We're down to 64.9. 64.8. Still dropping a hair, but now yeah, there it is. It's probably that's probably about where it's gonna rest. 64.8. Uh, dropping a little. But that's the ambient air around the tops of these cuttings. So we're keeping the bottom warm and the top a uh, little bit cooler. So that pretty well falls in line with what we're saying. Just about 10 degrees warmer in the medium. Now this is about 8 degrees warmer. Maybe a hair more. Something like that. Somewhere around there. But anyway, 
it's close to it. I mean, give or take. Like I said, it's not an exact science, but that's what we've got going on in here, and it's working out great for this little fig cutting propagation experiment, whatever you want to call it. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. That's the temperature we're riding with. That's my take on the subject. I hope that helps you guys a lot. I hope that you can take that information and run with it and go have some fun and make something happen. In the meantime, guys, I hope you liked the video. Have an awesome week. I'll see you in the next video. Adios. <laughs>